Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of Oblivion. This movie is directed by Joseph Kosinski, who previously directed Tron Legacy. And the movie stars Tom Cruise, Morgan Freeman, and Olga Kirilenko. Now the plot of this movie is the year is 2077. It's a post-apocalyptic world, and Tom Cruise plays Jack Harper, who along with his partner, played by Andrea Riseborough, are a repair team. His daily duties are to go out and repair these drones, which are like these satellites that survey and patrol the Earth. And it's not until a routine repair that a shocking discovery is made, and he is captured by the leader of the Scavengers, which are like the sand people from Star Wars. They're the enemy of Tom Cruise's people. That Morgan Freeman tells him to stop and reevaluate everything he thinks he knows and considers the truth. And so he starts to question everything from his job to his entire life. Let me start with the acting in this movie. Tom Cruise is the main character. Good job. He conveyed all the emotions that he had to do to get the job done. Happy, surprised, angry, witty. And then you have Andrea Riseborough, who plays his partner, Vecchi. She was like the sheltered girl that was raised her whole life thinking one thing, and if you try to introduce her to new ideas or new discoveries, she'll like feel uncomfortable and she won't want to encounter it. Good job on her part. I haven't seen her from anything before, but I like to see her in more stuff. And then you have Morgan Freeman, who... I like Morgan Freeman, I do, but I kind of felt like this role was filled by him because he's like 60 years old and they needed somebody in the movie to give Tom Cruise backstory. This role just wasn't something that made me go, okay, yeah, I'm going to remember Morgan Freeman in this role forever and ever. <laughs> you know, it's not like Driving Miss Daisy or, you know, God from Bruce Almighty. It just it was cool to see Morgan Freeman, but it wasn't a Morgan Freeman role. Then you have a supporting cast such as the guy who plays Jamie Lannister is in this movie. He only has like two or three lines of dialogue, but he was good in this, so I'd like to see him in more stuff because I see him as a, a future leading man. You even have Zoe Bell, who has no dialogue in the movie, but she's in it. And then you have Melissa Leo as like the person that Tom Cruise and his partner answer to through a computer monitor. She's like Vera Farming's character in the movie Source Code, and she's also like HAL 9000 where she has like a country accent, but she sounds like how, so she's still good, but it's just it's different for someone like that actress to, to be in. And then you have Olga Kirilenko, who was the Bond girl from Quantum of Solace, and she's in Max Payne. Good job. You know, at first I thought she was just a pretty face, but she proves that even without makeup and looking all nice and everything, she can act, so I liked her in this movie. Let me start off with the best thing this movie had going for it was just like Tron Legacy and Rise of the Planet of the Apes, this movie was amazing to look at. Not necessarily the greatest thing to watch, but it was amazing to look at. Just everything was so crisp and detailed, and even though it was in the future, things were, I like to say, clean. Where you can tell what everything is, and everything is so neat and organized, and everything that's white isn't necessarily like a bright white, but it's like kind of like a dirty white, but it still looked great. Like Tom Cruise, when he's in his ship and he has his glove on, you can see all the dirt and all the cracks and he's pushing the buttons. Just watch the movie and you'll see. But it's great to look at. The, the set, the details, the environments, all the shots, great to look at. Also, the music was really good. I liked how it had kind of like a Tron legacy, future, sci-fi um, score to it. Even the end credits was pretty good. Now, <clears throat> let me get to the not-so-good parts about this movie. I wanted this movie to be original, and I wanted to be different, and I wanted to be groundbreaking. But unfortunately, if you've seen any of the following movies, whether they be Star Wars, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Moon, Book of Eli, Gattaca, Planet of the Apes, you've seen this movie. Because this has a bunch of elements from those movies in it. And that also makes it to where parts are predictable or you see parts coming from a mile away, which to me hurt the movie-going experience because I want the movie to be completely different. But this to me suffers from the same thing that Prometheus suffered from, where you have a movie that's supposed to be new and interesting and supposed to, you know, set the bar for science fiction movies. But then you have a bunch of elements from stuff you've seen before. Not only that, but you have a movie where it tries to be like the ultimate sci-fi movie with twists and reveals and surprises and futuristic stuff. 
But then when you actually go back and look at it like I did, I saw the movie um, yesterday. And the more I think about it, I'm just like, well, this doesn't make sense. And how did this happen? Why didn't... You're left wanting to know more. You're left wanting to have all these questions you have answered. But unfortunately, unless they make a sequel or even a prequel, they're not going to do it. So just like when I walked out of Prometheus, the more I thought about it, I was like, well, it was cool, but now I'm wondering why this happened and why didn't they tell us about this, but they showed us a flashback about this, but they didn't tell us what's going to happen next, where these people come from, just stuff like that. You're wondering, all these things, you're not giving enough information. So because of all of that, the acting was good, it was great to look at, the music was good, but... The story was pretty much unoriginal. It's just bits and pieces of stuff we've seen before. From a rating of 1 to a 5, I'm going to give Oblivion a 3.5. It was worth the rental, and I'd probably buy it on Blu-ray, but don't be surprised, because I wanted to be, but essentially I wasn't. So, until next time, guys, see ya.